Welcome back to the Mike and Ike show and not the candy, a show with Michael Badgley and Isaac Rochelle, where we bring players on and we hear their story from their perspective. And today we have wonderful Justin Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's introduce this guy first. All right, Ike, here we go. This Don't guy Don't gas me. coming from hey, juices, man, coming up a bit. from Carroll Stream, Illinois, attended Glenbard North High School, went to Northwestern, played running back, the running back, and he's a seventh round selection by the Los Angeles Chargers in 2018. The, uh, Justin, know, <laughs> Justin Jackson, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. You know, I appreciate you guys having me on. I feel like this is going to blow up, so just in case, uh, follow Talk me on to Instagram. Him. Talk <laughs> to him. <laughs> Talk to him, <laughs> JJ. On Twitter at J underscore. Talk to him. Coming in hot with the shout-outs to start. Okay. Hey, let's go. well, put it out since, there. You know what I mean? Since you brought up the IG right off the bat, I got to know, since you've kind of, like, came on the scene, has the IG grown? Oh, it, it grew a lot. It actually grew a lot last year after the Pittsburgh game. I, I got like oh, hey no, because you were start, you were starting then because well, Eck was hurt. No, no, that was the, that game Eck – was playing so X started and then I came in and then the next game I think X was hurt yeah because Kansas City X was hurt yeah. that's so right and now that's when I was saying you RB one I was yeah, letting yeah I, I was pumping your tires at there. that point you know, I was just trying to get like badge. I know. <laughs> Listen, he made it, his life himself. changed that game. Yeah, yeah well, it his took, life it, changed three yeah. different times. It changed that game. Listen, third time's a charm. Now I didn't realize this, but you kind of came back into the scene with the Chargers right around the time I came in. Yeah. Yep. I was on practice squad, and then I got promoted for the Niners game. The Niners game. Is well, that, quick is that when quick you shout hit? out to Peace yeah, Squad. Well, here's here's the thing. Yeah, also, shout out to Peace Squad, squad <laughs> yeah. and seventh round. Yeah. 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 All right, all right. Yeah, this is all on Wikipedia. So if we get anything wrong, blame them, not us. Okay. Which well, is super true. Which is also a fun fact about him. He had no idea that he even had a Wikipedia yeah, page. Uh, so I welcome. guess I guess I made it. Yeah, I welcome to like, the show, man. That's it. I feel like that's standard now. Like for any NFL athlete, there's like a wiki page. It's actually crazy how in depth these go. And I think the funnest fact on here is the fact that your dad's name is Phil Jackson. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and then my brother's he's Phil Jackson the second, so it's great. I'm sure they've gotten a lot of Lakers slash Chicago Bulls. He's yeah. got a whole rundown of yeah. You, you know, what, what would you compare your father to or your brother? Would it be the Bulls Phil Jackson, the Lakers Phil Jackson, <laughs> or the late dumpster fire Phil Jackson in New York? Oh man, the old the old dumpster I, fire. I can't, I'm not gonna put that on my dad. Yeah, but, you can't do that. Um, I mean, my dad's the best. So which which best? JJ, we need an the answer. best version of Lakers Phil Bulls. I, or, I, you have to go Bulls, right? I mean, they, yeah, you know, that's they, fair. They had the dynasty. They, had, they so. had Jordan. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go with that. That's All right. fair. All right, but let's let, let's let's go back to square one here. No doubt. Yeah, let's, let's take us. We'll go ahead. Yeah, I, I, we kind of just want to get your story from the start. How'd you get into football? How did it all become? I mean, we we got some information here. We want to hear your story. How did you get it's, started? It's actually a funny story. So my brother's two years older than me, and I think I was eight years old, and my brother was signing up for football, and we were at the park district, and my dad's you know signing my brother up and everything. We go through all that stuff. And at the time, I was just I, all I did was play video games. Like all day, I played video games. I didn't go gamer. Outside. I didn't play sports. I mean, at that time, what was the what was the game? Back then, I was just playing like like NBA Live. That was kind of oh, boys. Oh, boys, yeah. UK even boys even playing got Sega. Big. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I literally, I literally, me and my my brother had a PS One. I think I had Xbox, like a regular Xbox. Like this was a while ago. That's what that That's old announcer. I, I forget the announcer's name, but he goes from down. Down. <laughs> that one. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That was fun, man. NBA Live. I played, you know, Madden. Um, I didn't play a lot of shooter games, but those were the two main ones. NCAA football. Uh, so that yeah, that was fun. But so at that time, I didn't really play sports. And then we were literally walking out of the park district. My brother had already signed up. Like whole hour process, all this stuff. And then at the last second, like I have no idea why. I just said, "No, oh, Dad, you know, I want to play. I want to play." He's like, "Are you serious? Like we just went through the whole process. I have to <laughs> like, go through the whole thing serious, again, bro." Yeah, so I was like that close to like probably never playing football, and um, and yeah, just right away I loved it. Always played running back, and yeah, yeah, I just loved it. And from and, that point on, you said, "Give me the rock, I'll score." Yeah, pretty much. And at that time, like you know, back when I was what eight, nine years old, I was the fastest one, so I just would get the ball and just run outside every time, every time, every time. And then I finally – I'm really glad about this, actually, is I had coaches that kind of, even at a young age, really showed me, like, this is how you should play the position. This is how, you know, watch I mean, that's super important. Stuff, you know? so, it's a game changer. Yeah. And I feel like there's a lot of really bad coaches yeah. at the at a young age. Yeah. I mean, it says you started playing in second grade. Yeah. 
like yeah, eight years old. Yeah. Were yeah. you hitting? Were you hitting in second grade? Second grade, it was instructional tackle. So it was like it was like between tackle and like flag. You yeah, know? but you're a little kid. You're like you're like, you're like all right, I'm trying, you're not getting somebody. smacked. <laughs> yeah, trying to <laughs> smack somebody. Uh, in second that's back grade. when like Oklahoma and bowl and the ring oh drill were still oh, fun to do. Man, dude, I remember all that stuff. Yeah, so. Yeah, so that was kind of the beginnings, the beginnings of my football journey. And then you just continue to light it up, and then you, you get to Glenbard North High School, where yeah, you are in good old Illinois. You make you know we we pumped up Zub last week, but you make Zub look like he's total trash. I mean, okay. it's kind of hard to say, but oh, it's listen. I hope Zub listens to this. It's easy to say. Yeah, you know he was a high school president. You weren't, but <laughs> fair. But you were a three sport athlete. Yep. And you had a GPA of 5.0. Yeah. Oh, man. His, the, the old, his 40 I mean, is better than his GPA. <laughs> what a beast. <laughs> well, he's. we were laughing about it. We didn't even know your GPA could go up yeah, past we had, four. We had honors classes. So if you had the, if you had a certain amount of honors classes, you're, it was weighted. So you could get weighted up to five. It's. I mean, that's spoken like a true <laughs> like student. I didn't even know it was a thing. I didn't take AP. <laughs> But I got I got kicked out of an AP course, but we're not here for that. Okay, so <laughs> well, hold on. Why did you get kicked yeah, yeah, out of I an wanna, AP? I want to hear this. Why did you get okay, kicked so out of an I AP had, course? I took an AP government class, uh-huh. and I had signed because I, you know, there was kind of some schools starting to look at me, like Stanford or whatever. And well, keep my, in mind, he went to man. after all that, he went to a military school. Well, let's look. Okay, I mean, I'm so just saying. We'll bring I was it up again. getting I was getting some looks, you know, Harvard schools and stuff. Mm. So my guidance counselor said, "Let's let's get some uh, AP classes," and I'm like. I don't think I'm really meant for AP class. He's like, no, we got to get them right. in there. You'll Just, figure it yeah, out for the for the resume. I go in there the first day, and the teacher the teacher kind of knew me. You know, was, <laughs> she's like, this dude's a bum. I get was this a, dude out of here. Was, <laughs> uh, I was, you know, I was, I was a jock in high school, or whatever. I did well. I got to I got to college. And now I'm here, but uh, I get to class, and he comes over to me, he puts his hand on my shoulder, and he goes, Mike. I don't think you should be in this class. <laughs> I mean, I get it. And I go, like, I go, I go. Really? And he goes, yeah, you should definitely just get out here while you can. So what ended up happening is I stayed for one day. We took like an entry level quiz Mm. and I totally bombed it and ended up getting a second study hall with my unassigned. That's love. With the old old PE coach. It was was back to back. But uh, yeah, that was my one experience with an AP class. So kudos to you for having a 5.0 because I think if you took my GPA twice, it probably makes up to yours. Probably. Well, I want to hear about this. Illinois high school football. I'm from Georgia. Georgia's Mm -hmm. got what I like to think is the best high school football in the country. Mm -hmm. How was it playing in Illinois? I mean, you got these – we always – we were joking about this last week with Zub Stats. Like, the stats you had, 6,500 rushing yards in high school, (laughs) which is – I mean, it says you were one of the most high school – one of the most successful high school running backs in Illinois – have, you have to have some of the records in Illinois for oh. rushing yards, which you seem to be a guy who holds a lot of records. But just talk to me a little bit about Illinois high school football. Yeah, it's – I think a lot of people – I mean, because, right, you got the top states, right? You got Jer- Texas. Jersey. Don't listen. Don't put Illinois in the top <laughs> no, no, states. No, no. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, let, let me finish. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. You got Texas. You know, you got California. Florida. If you want to put Georgia in Yes, there. sir. I think Ohio's got really good football. No doubt. New Jersey. Yep. And there's, yeah. there's, some good, there's some good schools. Yeah. There's some good schools in, in Jersey. You're like right. Catholic and uh, Don Bosco. Don Bosco. Yeah, yeah, Don Bosco. And Summit High School. That's right. Me. Okay. But so a lot of people <laughs> don't think of Illinois High School as like this high, highly touted state and all this type of stuff. No, no. And, you know, I think at, even when I first got to college, we had a lot of guys from Ohio and a lot of guys from Texas. So, you know, they always like, you know, you went to you played high school football in Illinois and all this it's basically just talking trash. Yeah, trying to clown. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, all type of stuff. And I like low key took that to like heart. Like I was like, all right, bet we're you know, I'm gonna go out here and show you, you know, just because I, I come from the state and I play football here doesn't mean that I can't, you know, I can't really go out there and play football, you know. What I mean? like it. And so I kinda always just took that as like a, a motivating factor for me. So are you more motivated in this interview because I was gunning Illinois football? Basically. Okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I had, you know, pretty good stats and stuff, but for me, it was always about being consistent. So, like, once I got to college, I want to just show that, you know, I could still put up these type of numbers. I could still, you know, have this type of production. Yeah. Just just so we're clear, uh, pretty good stats. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, <laughs> 6,531 yards. It was all right. <laughs> seventh all time in rushing touchdowns with 85. Kidding me? Yeah, I got the ball a lot, to be fair. So what is that? I mean, it's a great transition because you're talking about the attitude that you mm. took to college. 
What does that look like when you have 6,500 rushing yards when you think about recruiting? Like, I would think that yeah. every single school would be in there. Yeah. Like, all right, we need Justin. On top of that, he's got a 5.0 GPA. I mean, it's it's It's, it's a no-brainer. It's interesting because it's really been like that my entire life. I was always told I was too small, wasn't fast enough, all this stuff. And so... But you're putting up the numbers. Right. And and so for me, it was always about production, right? Like, it doesn't matter what my weight is. It doesn't matter what my speed is. Like, you see what I can do on the football field. No doubt. And even going from college to the NFL, um, you know, I went in the combine and they say, you know, you got to do great in the combine, do, put up good numbers. And I did all that. I had great combine numbers. I had great production in college. And yet, I still felt like I was a, a better back than where I was drafted. No doubt. Um, so that's always just giving me that chip on my shoulder. You know what I mean? Like, People just always underestimate me like, you know, I can't be a really good running back. And so I always just that motivates me and pushing me to work harder every single day. Well, it's obvious because, like you said, you had it as soon as you got to college. Your freshman year, it says here you started five of 12 games, which is huge as a freshman. Well, hold on. Hold on a second. So before we go into your college, your prolific college career, is actually pretty crazy. How did you choose Northwestern? Um, it. I mean, as you guys can tell, academics was important for me, but mostly because it was important to my family. Like, my, my dad is an engineer. My stepmom is a forensic scientist for the state police. So they're very, like, into, you know, school and just getting your education, having a backup plan. Um, that's something my stepmom always talked about. Like, you know, you have to have a plan B, you have to have a plan B. And, and that's why she was so excited when I went to Northwestern because she knows what type of school that was, yeah. where that is. And so my top three was it was Northwestern, it was Iowa, actually, and Vanderbilt. And basically, I was like, okay, why would I go to Vanderbilt if I could basically get that same type of prolific schooling and everything, playing the Big Ten and be 45 minutes from home. So No doubt. When you think about it like that, and you big, you're still playing in the Big Ten. Right. And then you are getting an unreal education because yeah. Northwestern is about as good as it can get, right? Um, especially in the Midwest. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. And then, you know, Illinois, right? I mean, that's that's near South Bend. Yeah, Indiana. I mean, it's hours. right there. It's yeah. the next so door. Notre Dame never came knocking? Nah, I, I think they came into my school, but they never offered. Notre That's Dame good. You don't want to go there anyway. Exactly. I, I mean, I, rather, I can't I even rather, say anything because they beat, beat us. Beat them We're going to the next year. I'd rather <laughs> beat them the next year. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. So, okay, I want to talk about this. So, so freshman year, you came in and pretty much – you you were a huge contributor. Yeah. We're gonna get to all the records you broke, but you had how many yards your freshman year? Eleven hundred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you so, started five out of twelve games, and you still had eleven hundred yards. Yeah. So I didn't because there was a senior ahead of me. He's he's a good friend, friend of mine, uh, Trayvon. Shout out to Trayvon. Yeah. So he was he was ahead of me. Um, <laughs> I don't know Trayvon. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were like at, in the beginning. I got like a few carries a game, like for the first like three or four games, and then I started getting more carries. And then by, like, game seven or something, I, I was starting. I mean, he was still playing a good amount, too, but I was starting. And so, yeah, that year was, like, there was a lot of ups and downs. You know, I, we weren't – we didn't have a great year. I think we, we ended up going five and seven. So. I mean, you beat one of the best teams in the country historically every year. We did. We did beat Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. We did beat Notre Dame. And then a few weeks later, we lost to U of I, who was not a great team. So Ah, uh, yeah. That's on you guys. Come well, on, it's, it's, come it's on, crazy Ike. looking back. <laughs> come on, though, Ike. Now that like we know each other, it's funny looking back because yeah, that is. was just such a devastating loss for us. Uh-huh. And because you guys were rolling, we were. Well, we went six and zero, and then went on a five game losing streak. Oh, but I'm Gotta saying it was devastating. That. But little Gotta did I love know when they Notre had Dame's losing like that. Oh, I mean, you <laughs> maybe you, but uh, so your college career yeah. continued to be great, though. I mean, yeah. You can. I'm gonna let you tell us. I have it written down, but I want to hear from you the records that you set in college. You know, um, you can pump your tires. Yeah, here. You know, okay. talk to Come him. On. Talk okay. to him. Come on, let us know. Okay, so I think I was one of two backs in, in Big Ten that have four 1,000 yard seasons. Yep. Um, I'll just I'll check off the. Yep. It was Ron yep. Dane. Ron, of course, Ron Dane. Ron, Ron Dane. Dane, the other one who ended up. He ended up like seven thousand yards rushing total, so I wasn't even close to that. Um, but I ended up being, I think, third behind Ron Dane and uh, Archie Griffin. It's true. So just two. I have it written down right here. Third <laughs> in the Big Ten. Two, Talk two, to him. Two, uh, you know, obviously unbelievable Hall of Fame type running backs. Um, and I, was that? I don't know if there's uh, all time lead rusher at Northwestern. Uh, yeah, um, you had that on your back. There's, there's one yeah, more. There's one, one major okay. one. And I, I have to say about that is the backs that I ended up passing were Damon Anderson. 
whose son now plays at Northwestern. He's a a good friend of mine. He was an unbelievable back. He was a Heisman Trophy finalist. Um, and, and he's he's top on all time rushing. Yeah, yeah, he's he. I think he's like he's top twenty. We yeah, confirmed that today. He's, he's top close. twenty. And then Darnell Autry is another great running back. So there's and Tyrell Sutton, who I watched when I was growing up. So it was just it was amazing to pass these guys who like I grew up watching. And, like, I'd watch film on them and be, like, you know, trying to take little bits and pieces from their game and, and add them to mine. So it's it's very surreal to, to do stuff like that. And just to just to throw this out there, because he didn't say it. So J.J. was top 10. You were 10th yeah. in all-time yeah. college football rushing, mm. which is crazy because you are ahead of, like, some of the most iconic running backs that we now know. Right. Yeah, it, and it's it's it crazy. Is, it's, it is crazy. That's next level it's, stuff. It's, it's crazy to think about. <laughs> like I said, these are like when I was growing up, I would I just loved just watching film of of great running backs, and I felt like I could just take just little parts from their game. And and obviously I'm my own unique back, but I feel like I'm a kind of an amalgamation of a bunch of different running backs. You know what I mean, I mean it, shout out to Northwestern for the vocab word. Okay. No clue what that means. <laughs> I'm a, com- I'm, a no com- I'm a combination of a bunch of different I'm running backs. Like, wow, he lost <laughs> into no, my good. <laughs> but seriously, whatever you did worked because, like, like we're talking about the stats. I mean, you showed up and performed. And I have one more question about Northwestern. Mm-hmm. The the rottery, as we say, that you had with your teammates. It seems like. It's the same as Notre Dame, where you have a unique brand of yeah. player that goes to Northwestern. Yes. And so you walk in the locker room, and you're looking around, and you're like, I'm just like this guy. I'm just like mm. this guy. So talk to us a little bit about the chip that you guys all had on your shoulder, pinstripe, all these bowl games that you went into. Yeah. How did the Rottery, like, contribute to that? Yeah, I mean, I think I came in at a, a great time for Northwestern because we were, we were really coming up. Two years before I got there, we won the Gator Bowl against Mississippi State, who had – at the time, had Dak Prescott on the team, so that was a really big, a big win for our program. Anytime you beat an SEC right. team, it's huge. Like exactly. that, that's a big one. Let's not exactly. gas the SEC up like that. Uh, they're 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 pretty. They're pretty. Bro, good. people worship the SEC. They're pretty. Uh, who was the latest national champion? Okay, we get ACC. it. But still, they yeah, beat an SEC you can, team. You can, and it's you, a big deal. Just because there's one ACC team that's kind of killing it. One. Clemson. Don't forget about the U, baby. Okay. All right. But uh, are we serious? <laughs> Just the because there's U? one that's at the top doesn't mean it brings the whole conference up. Listen, he's blinded by the turnover chain. They're not that nice. Don't disrespect the U. That's all I'm saying. That's all, all right. I'm saying. All right. we, we can keep talking. Just don't disrespect the U like that. All right. All right. We do have like we'll way too on. many hurricanes on our team. So. <laughs> <laughs> we won't. I mean, same thing with Notre Dame. So okay. Between so North guys, Northwestern's like, climb. Team. Northwestern's climbing. Yeah. Yeah. The so, rotary. Yeah. I came in at a, a great time. I I, I feel like. Um, and so I think all of us really wanted to just prove that, you know, we were here and we're not just, you know, a Northwestern team. You're going to show up and just run through us, you know, like it was in the past. And so I think we all had that chip on our shoulder to go out there and, and really perform and beat these teams we're not supposed to beat. You know what I mean? And so yeah. I think it's great to be in that type of environment and where you feel like you're all pushing each other and you're you're the underdog. You go in there. You know, you guys might not know what that feels like. When you're in the underdog, you're going in there. And everyone sure. thinks you're going to get your game. butt kicked. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm five and foot ten, 180 win. pounds. I think I'm an underdog every day. Every Sunday, yeah, but you know, you could, you could kick the ball. <laughs> yeah, right? 50, yeah, you, yeah. What, what was the record kick? You got last I year? mean, we uh, we're not gonna <laughs> click it. We have we have a sound bite. As a matter of fact, talking to sound bites, I want you to listen to something, and I want you okay. to tell me what you think of. Okay, a little trivia question: Northwestern and this sound, put them together. What do you think of? You smart. You loyal. <laughs> Okay. I appreciate you. <laughs> I talk to me a little bit that's about as DJ Khaled. Okay. Did he motivate Northwestern? And if you say no, you're lying. Because <laughs> I'm gonna read something to you. Did he motivate us? I On know. December 24th, 2015, I don't know who you were playing, <laughs> but you were playing in Tampa. You tweeted, shout out DJ Khaled. Would love for you to be in Tampa January 1st to watch our game. <laughs> oh, you have been man. a major key on our pathway to success this year. Bless up. Yeah, bless up. I, I got, listen. I barely remember tweeting oh, that. Why yeah. I tweet that? That's Did, so weird. Yeah, that's terrible looking back at it. Oh, maybe maybe it's because, you know, at that time, like, he was he was really big, like, major key and all that type of stuff. And he'd always would put those stories up. And I think he was in my, was he in South Beach or Miami? He had, like, said he was in Tampa. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, you know so what? I, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I guess I just wanted him to show up to the game. I'm glad he didn't come because we got completely 
thrashed that game. It's out of character for Northwestern. It is. Now. It is. It's out of we, character. We didn't, we didn't show up that day. We actually ended up playing Tennessee, who at the time had Kamara on the team, and he destroyed us. So He's a beast. He's another yeah. good running back. Yeah. Not to uh, brag on you some more, but you are ahead of him in all-time rushing for uh, college football, so whatever. That's true. That's true. Um, but looking at these stats, we'll kind of fast forward. Um, you look at the the running backs that are in the top for all-time rushing mm-hmm. yards. When we were looking at it this morning, these guys were drafted first round, yeah. second round, yeah. third round, mm. fourth round, fifth round, sixth round. Not many top ten guys were seventh round. I think there's one, and it's Justin Jackson. Mm. Talk to us a little bit about that process. Was it frustrating? What were your expectations? Yeah, I think it was frustrating, um, I, I, especially because you know I went to the combine. I felt like I did really good. I had I was like top five in a lot of different categories. I was like tied for six on the forty time and all this type of stuff. So I felt like I did everything I could. And I had to do to kind of improve my draft stock or whatever. Talk to him a little bit, Listen, <laughs> Talk to him. Right. We did this with Zub, okay. but let's read these freakish numbers because you just said, I think I had a pretty good draft. I had a pretty good uh, and Y'all got combine. everything ready. Well, man. To, and, and, and you had to throw in here, okay? Mr. 5,500. He had 5,500 rushing yards on top of this. In right. the Big Ten. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Sorry, let me let me let me read these numbers out for you. Your forty yard dash is a four five. You're a four five guy, as Coach Stewart said. I would say guy. I round down. You're four four nine. And you got foot. You got <laughs> like football. That. You got I like that. You got foot. <laughs> Thank you, got, you. I appreciate that. You got football speed. So if someone's chasing you, you're probably right around a four two four one. Who knows? <laughs> no doubt. Okay, yes. <laughs> your three column was a six eight one. Your vertical jump was at thirty eight and a half inches. That's, elite. That's that's elite. That's elite. You bench press th- thirteen reps. I was like, what'd you get? Like five. I got 25, 25, but I'm also that a D lineman. Strong, Fair enough. That boy's <laughs> big, strong. <laughs> your broad jump was 10 foot 2 inches. So you're coming from the Big Ten. You Mr. 5500. 5, Mr. 5500. And you put up these numbers. So in your head, you're thinking, yeah, I'm going to be maybe a day one, day two kind of guy. Yeah, I mean, that, I think that just goes to show. And, and this is why I always think that's that of like the majority of the uh, NFL is like, lower drafted guys to undrafted guys is because I think the whole draft process is like, um, you know, who looks the best or who has the measurables or who, you know, they think they can mold into this type of player. And I think they look past a lot of like just football, like a good football player. And and that goes to, you know, how you – like what does your film look like in the games? You know what I mean? I think they just look for like these freakish athletes get like first round, second round grades. A lot of times, not even really off what they did in college, just about what they think they could possibly Their potential, do. yeah, right. And that's why I think you you see more guys in the top rounds that you know don't end up working out, and and more guys. Not only do they have a chip on their shoulder when they're a lower draft pick, they feel like you, you really have to work harder to get ahead. But yeah. also, like these are really good football players who maybe just didn't have this measurable that you know the scout was looking for or something like that. You know what I mean? So that's kind of how I felt, and like I said, it just added motivation to me coming yeah. coming to the, to the Chargers. So you're sitting around on draft day, yeah, and long, I'm sure you're like, this days. could go, this could go either way. Yeah. <laughs> what are you thinking? Well, it was wild, you know. I, you know, I figured I wasn't gonna, gonna go day one, and, and day two, like, I'm like, you know, shoot, you know, you're like, shoot, I might get that phone call. Yeah, I might get the phone call. You know what I mean? And then oh, so you don't, you know, not day two, and then day three, I'm sitting around like, okay, I'm definitely gonna call today. You know, what no I mean? doubt, like fourth round, fifth round, like, I'm definitely gonna call whatever. And then like, it's literally fourth, fifth, sixth. I'm, I haven't got a call. Seventh round, and it's like the last five or six picks. And so at this time, I'm like, okay, I'm probably not going to get drafted. I'm going to have to pick a <laughs> You're team. You're like, I you know don't want to be Mr. Irrelevant. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be I'm that I'm not guy. answering my phone. <laughs> right. I'd rather like not, not get picked than get picked Mr. Irrelevant. But, um, <laughs> wow. Yeah, not so answering. it was it was, it was was a crazy three days, like super stressful. Oh, when I, I finally got that call to charge, it was like one of the teams I really wanted to go to. I wa- always wanted to be on the West Coast because I've just been in Chicago my whole life. So right. it just it really worked out perfectly. Well, I will say this. You know, as sad as you guys may have been on your day three, okay. you guys get a phone Here call, we go. Here we go. seventh round picks. I'm still sitting there waiting to pick a team. You know, I didn't get yeah. drafted. I call myself an eighth rounder. Okay. That's what it is. You are uh, Mr. Irrelevant. No, 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 no. Those guys get it. That guy's actually drafted. I was just sitting there. I had to pick a team. So for you guys to actually get a phone call. It's a blessing. Listen, that we're both true. seventh rounders. We share the same birthday, April 22nd. We Earth do. Day. We share Earth a lot day. of things. It is a blessing, to, blessing. To, to get drafted. 100%. And you can be so frustrated. I was so frustrated 
for two days. I'm like, how am I not getting a phone call? <laughs> right. Granted, I had four sacks my whole career. I shouldn't have went any higher than I did. <laughs> but when you finally get the phone call, it's like, you're like, it's the best right, thing in the world. Everything's out the window. Let's go enjoy this. Yep. This is huge, huge for the team. Um, so I definitely feel you. Yeah. And then now that you've been here, what's it been like being a seventh rounder, trying to prove yourself, trying to overcome the odds, starting on practice squad. Yeah. Now we're here. Talk to us a little bit yeah, about I the mean, process. I was just, cause last year during training camp, you know, I injured my hamstring and so I wasn't able to play until the last game and I was like 75, 80%. So I didn't really play that well. Yeah. And so I was just happy that I was still around, you know, because I, you know, a lot of, a lot of times you when you get hurt, you don't get that opportunity to really show, you know, improve yourself. So I was just happy to be here. I didn't right. care. Practice squad, I, I didn't care. Anything. Keep Anything. Me here. Exactly. Sign me up. And so once I finally got healthy and, um, you know, I was able to, you know, practice and really show what I could do, it took, what, three or four weeks before I got the call up. And I just felt I just felt like if I could just put my head down and work and show them what type of back I could be, um, you know, then I could prove myself and get, and get an opportunity. And and then I played three or four games just on special teams, never getting any reps. And then, you know, we had injuries and I had to step up. And it was, you know, Pittsburgh Sunday night game. Oh, um, not and, bad. Not I mean, bad. Two, some MVPs from the game, but you guys can continue. Yeah, ba- ba- yeah Baz knows. When you get that opportunity, and he, you know, and Baz obviously was here, and then you were on practice squad. Oh, yeah. And then you got called back, and you just you had to, you know, do your thing when your number was called. And I'll say this. I'll say this. Practice squad for kickers. The compared to what you guys job do. in America. I mean, you think about the greatest it's job. It's got to be the best job in America. It's got to be the best job in America. Bro. A P-Squad kicker? I was like, yeah, hey, sure, why not? Throw me on there. For but, us, we're like, all right, what can I do at practice? You got older guys telling you to slow down. Right. Like, what can I do at practice to prove myself? Because I hate being on practice squad. Right. Yes, it's a great <laughs> job. Yes, I have an unreal opportunity, but I don't want to be on practice right. squad. No, everyone wants to play. Yeah. Everyone wants to play. But as a kicker, it is the best job in no, America. No doubt. But no yeah, doubt. But that Sunday night game when you got that touchdown, I was it was exciting, man. It, all I remember was just like pure joy because I felt like it was I had worked so hard, been through injuries, all this adversity, and then I finally had a moment, and it was just like the culmination of like a, you just felt, a lot of you work. Felt DJ. You felt know? DJ. DJ Khaled. <laughs> okay, continue. I'm sorry. You felt the inner DJ Khaled. In <laughs> I you. felt it, <laughs> and I felt it. Um, and so yeah, it was like I said, just a, a really great moment. And now I'm just trying to build upon that. Um, upon this off season, upon this you know training camp and everything, and and really put a you know carve out my spot on this offense because we have so many weapons as you guys know. So just trying to yeah cover my spot in this offense and 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 be a factor. <laughs> Which you are, you and Eck, kind of scary. Oh my gosh, it's the fun, duo, man. <laughs> it's and it's fun. and you guys have a unique unique opportunity this year. But I mean, you'd agree like you have total confidence in you or Eck, especially after last year. Yeah, and that and that's what's so great is like we kind of had this like try this like run through of this right when Mel went down it was you know me and Eck yeah and so we kind of had this like duo already going and now it's kind of just a continuation of that and you know how it is like even with you the NFL you always got to be ready yeah always and then you get your shot and you're like all right let me ball it happened with you last year. Yeah, All right, you got a nuts. call after hanging out on the couch for five weeks. Oh yeah, I was hanging with my buddies in Hoboken. Plan it, plan, you planned your Dublin trip then, just hanging out. Oh yeah, that was booked back in September. <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, I was just hanging out on the couch. You get a call, hey, come try out or come work out for us Chargers. And then I, you know, I had just flown back from Oakland from a workout. So then I come back, and I'm like, I really got to fly out to California again. So I said, <laughs> All right, yeah, might, yeah. might as well make this one count. So luckily now, they, yeah. uh, they liked me enough to keep me around and. Yeah. Now, now it's money badge. He's a staple. Yeah. Um, now it's like, have, go get your money sweatshirt. badge T-shirt. Uh, oh yeah, you do. <laughs> you're you're one of the few. Why did you buy? Oh, you got a Badgers su- sweatshirt. He supports. Yeah, me. you got to support your. That's teammates. why I have I have one of Keenan's sweatshirts too. Like you got to support your teammates. Man. He gets it. You know what I mean, I get it. You, do you, you, do need, you have a clothing line? I don't. So there you, you need go. guys like this on your team, though. <laughs> you need a Mister Fifty Five Hundred every once in a while. Um, why don't you give yourself a little shout out? I like to ask people this. We were talking about asking people this. Like, what do you have going on? You already gave your Instagram a shout out. Are you selling apparel? Talk to us a little bit about what's going on. Oh, man. You know, I'm not, I am working on a lot of these things, right? (laughs) I'm working on getting that type of stuff. Um, Right now, I don't really have anything. So just, yeah, follow my social media pages. I'm going to try, I have a cameo. I have a cameo. So if you want a, a shout out or any type of, you know, video or something like that, Book me on Cameo. Um, I love interacting with uh, the fans and, and everybody. So, yeah. 
I really appreciate you guys having me on. It was really hey, fun. you're a great guest, man. You got the updated studio. Zub's gonna, be, yeah, Zub's gonna be pissed at this. Feels so official, but oh yeah. yeah. Thank you. See you guys later. <laughs>